So, um, Dr. Tour, your, your, your series was about origin of life. Let's talk about what is life. And you, uh, I, I have, you know, it's not for me to give you the credit, but I have to give you the credit that you are the first one who let me hear about interconnectomes. All right. And I've been, I've been reading about this thing for, you know, 20 years. And the first time I heard about the criticality of the matter of interconnectomes was to life was from you. So what is an interconnectome and why is there silence about it in the world of microbiology to the extent that I, I, I don't think I, it's, it's my ignorance. I think it's very rarely talked about. Yeah, this uh, is, why is there silence about it? Well, it's not that there was silence in the sense that th these are newly discovered things. This is what I'm telling you, the, 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 the goalposts move further and further away. We're just learning about, and, and these, this interconnectedness is, the, I think the term is interactomes, interactomes. And so these- Yeah, yeah my yeah, bad. Yeah, that's all right. And, and so these interactomes, this is the non-covalent interaction that occurs between molecules. So you can have molecules hooked together. So they're hooked together by a bond. That's a covalent interaction. Or you can just have them uh, associated with one another because of non-covalent bonds. And you might think of it analogous to, it's not this, but it's analogous to magnetic forces. So magnetic forces that, that, that you know, it may not be as strong as hooking things together physically, but there's reasonable strength. That sort of, of, of uh, uh, force between them uh, uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, this interactome force, and it's what's called the, all the forces put together, are what's called the, the van der Waals forces, all of these forces put together. And it turns out this alignment between them is critical for life. And so you have extraordinar extraordinarily high numbers of possible arrangements when you're talking about uh, interactome. So the one I gave, the one that's used in the article, which I talked about in my video, is that is that uh, um, uh, there are the the chances of getting the proper interactome that you would need just in a single yeast cell, which is a very simple cell. Just thinking of the protein protein interactions, not protein DNA, protein RNA, just protein protein, is one in ten to the 79 billion. This, this number is so big that it, it, it's crazy to even think about it. One in 10 to the 79 billion. So the numbers the first are time, the, first, the first time I heard you say that, I thought you made a mistake. Right. Let's just be sure. It's, it's 10 and there, in the power, there is a one having 79 billion zeros in front of this. And this is in the power. Yeah, 10, 10, and then it's 79, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Yeah, yeah. 79 billion. Yes, 10. In 10 the billion. power. In the power, right. Okay, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not that we have 79 billion uh, uh, interactomes. Uh, no, it's right. 10 to the power 79 billion. Billion. Possible. This is, a, this is an unimaginable number, essentially. Un unimaginable. No it. It's, it's yeah. unimaginable number. And and uh, this is not my number. And that's why I showed in the video, I showed the actual, here, here's the quote from the paper. It shows it, 10 to the 79 billion. And and so you have this types, these types of numbers. And so now you have a new paradox that's not just the protein folding paradox, and, and, the, and the, the protein coding paradox where those are, you know, in the one, one in 10 to the 40th or one in 10 to the 50th, this is a much bigger number. So what happens with the cell does, you know, life is remarkable. So what a cell does is it takes this, this informational arrangement and the cell, when it divides, it clamps down and it takes half of it here, half of it here. And now you get two new cells. So it keeps passing the information along. Can I ask you, can I ask you, how do we know that the interactomes have informational content? So uh, how, how do we verify the hypothesis? Right. So, so you know it has informational content because if you lose it, the cell cannot function. All right. The cell stops functioning. So when you lose structural water, these are held together by hydrogen bonds, for example. You lose structural water, you can never rehydrate a cell once you've lost the structural water to a cell. So it, this, is, this, is a testable, this is a testable hypothesis. This is a testable, and, and, and the other thing about it is through 
these non-covalent interactions that, that electrostatic potentials transfer. Electrostatic potentials are these, these uh, electron gradients that pass information through cells. Information is transferred through electron gradients. And the, the reason we know things about this is you can have, a, say, a DNA strand, and we suspected this. Now, a DNA strand is covalently linked, but the idea was how, do you, how is this an enzyme here on DNA? Hundreds of angstroms away know that there's a break in the DNA or damage down there, so the enzyme starts moving down there. <clears throat> so it gives us clues that there are electron gradients that are going through the orbital cloud system. You can show, and we've published in this area, we've published papers in this area to show that non-covalent interactions have a very long coherence length of information transfer, electrostatic information transfer that goes through the orbital construct, such that you, you affect one orbital, it affects the next, affects the next, and this travels at the speed of light. This is much faster than ionic gradients. This is at the speed of light and near the speed of light, these electron gradient, these transfer gradients. And all of this is information content. And so this is giving us clues that within a cell, there is this way of, in, of transferring information that's just remarkable, remarkable. This is the complexity of a cell. So when, when, when I'm watching a video about damage to a DNA strand and then this enzyme comes and just lands in the right place and starts fixing it, it's not because it has randomly gone there or it is continuously, you know, policing the whole uh, DNA or the whole chromatid or chromatin or whatever, or the whole chromosome. It is because it received a signal. It receives a signal. So it could be way, way far away and just start moving right across the DNA to fix that break. If it had to randomly find mistakes on DNA, we'd have a whole lot more cancer than we have. And we'd have a whole lot more problems. It is, it is getting electronic information that is signaling it to do this. This is extraordinary. And, and what happens is I've seen people even make videos and say, well, Tour grabs these esoteric concepts like, 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 uh, um, like chiral induced spin, spin selectivity. And so because they say it's esoteric, it now doesn't have to be addressed. No, this has to be addressed. This is what I'm talking about. Most biologists have never even heard of interactomes. Most biologists have never even heard of chiral induced spin selectivity. What I'm bringing to light here is the complexity of the chemistry of the new things we're learning before the biologists even start turning, talking about it. And YouTubers will say, oh, well, that's just esoteric. So somehow it doesn't have to be addressed. No, it has to be addressed. This is what I'm saying. The complexity is getting harder all the time. Yeah, and, and, and I, I have always wondered when I'm watching those, you know, uh, rendered graphics of, you know, an RNA strand getting out of the nucleus and miraculously it finds, you know, the, 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 rib the ribosomes and miraculously then the protein finds another enzyme to fold it and then miraculously mm -hmm. it finds a kinesin or something to move it around. How did what you're know? saying that there are no, th this is a system that is signaling itself all the time to find itself and, and act and that uh, water has a critical role there and the arrangement of all those Van der Waal interactions is not random. This is, this is a system that is looking for a chance to be properly arranged in 10 to the power 79 billion possible ones, and not all of them will make it work. A very, very few of them will make it work. Yes, yes. This, this, this is the complexity of a cell. That's why I said your fly is just, you can't even think about that. I mean, it just, it's over. The argument no way. is over if you say a fly. <laughs> all right, so... It just brings us to the water because you talked about the water. So interactomes related to the matter of life being dependent on water. And I think in all religions, water have uh, water has this, you know, elevated status. And and what you're teaching us now is that water is just not those, you know, passive H2O molecules. They are a communication system. Yeah, they are an information. They are memory. They are much more than what we thought. Yeah, it's, it's, it's glue 
for the interactomes. I mean, it's, it, it's this, these hydration pathways are essential. You know, if you just take the water molecule and you just change the dipole moment of water, if it were just 0.001% different, the dipole moment, no life exists. I mean, it, it, this, this is, you know, this, this is the whole argument of fine tuning. Everything has to match up for this, just has to match up for this. I mean, uh, water's amazing and it has to have the, the, everything has to be right for this to work. Let's let's go into closing, and this is this was super exciting, uh, Jim. Really, and uh, uh, I wonder if you'd like to continue this some other time. But um, let let me jump to to. I have some few closing questions. I'll just wrap them into one. Um, I, I had one about 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 uh, God and about how it feels to be a believer in science. And let, let me ask you this one. Um, can you tell us about one thing in your work where you saw God's hands so obvious? You know, you thought this can never be there if there is no God. Yeah, I remember we were we were building what we had called a, a synthetic brain, and and it was to take a disordered array of molecules and nanoparticles in a box in a in a micron sized two D square, and program it to do something useful. So to take disorder and, and give voltage pulses from the outside to make order. To, to, this was the constituents, what were the constituents? What were the it, constituents? It, it was involved? molecules that could undergo switching states and held together by nanoparticles. And we were able to make very, very simple little things like an AND gate, like an OR gate, uh, like a NOR so gate. Those, those are like biological transistors, let's say. Yeah, something like that. And, and, uh, but then at the same time, my son, who was about four or five years old at the time, came running toward me. And I looked at the complexity of what he was saying and what he was doing and how he's running and moving. And here I am putting everything I have into, into a, a molecular system to try to build some sort of computing device. And here is a functioning child. <laughs> and I said, God, you are extraordinary. How did you do this? How did you make him like this? This is just utterly amazing. And I, this is the beauty of being a scientist. You get to look at the things that are ubiquitous around us. And you say, this is utterly amazing. How? And I just had to give glory to God. I had to give glory to God. I love God so much. He means everything to me. I love serving him. I love honoring him. I just enjoy doing my work and knowing him. And when I look at biology, and then I look at the simple things that I do, I just give glory to God. I said, Lord, you are extraordinary. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord Most High. I think that was uh, too marvelous to say anything after it. It's just consistent with what we say that real scientists are the ones who glorify God. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Tour, I, uh, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm endlessly thankful to you for this uh, amazing talk and. Uh, for sure, I'd love uh, if you can uh, spend some more time uh, here. We had some questions from the uh, the audience, but most of the uh, comments are actually uh, uh, commending what you were saying and agreeing to it. So um, uh, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Thank you. Uh, it's a blessing to find somebody who is as excellent as you in your field and as uh, loving and touching in your feelings towards uh, the Creator. And uh, there, is, there, is, there is one God for everybody, and I thank you for seeing uh, this, and for really thank you so much for having all the integrity and the courage and the honesty to uh, call this out and, you know, be the one... You're, 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 everybody's looking at you and up at you now because um, 
So uh, stand strong there, uh, Dr. Tour, and thank you very much for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, everyone, uh, thank you for uh, for watching this, and um, uh, God bless uh, Dr. Tour and your uh, pursuit of truth and pursuit of science and service to humanity so through the great things that you're doing. Thank you. And uh, see you see you again soon.